Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new welcome to my channel. Today I'm covering the Lizzie Borden case. This is my second time trying to film this um, video. I tried a couple of days ago. I had like a job interview and then I was like it's definitely a good idea to try and film a video now. So I filmed a video at like 6 o'clock at night. I hated the lighting. I hated everything. I literally edited it all, exported it to my laptop and then I was like no. So I deleted it, so I'm starting again, so this is take two. Um, hi guys, my name's Ellie and welcome to my channel. Um, if you guys are new to my channel, I'm doing a mystery series where I cover murders, ghost occurrences, anything creepy and strange. So don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of my little videos. I also do basic things like DIY videos and daily vlogs, so a little bit of everything on this channel. Um, if you guys don't know me... Um, I'm obsessed with murder documentaries, anything creepy and spooky, so I thought it would be the best idea to start this little mini-series on my channel, so welcome! As I said before, I will be covering the Lizzie Borden case in this video. I watched a documentary ages and ages, ages ago, probably like a good four years ago, about this case and I was absolutely obsessed. I didn't understand how she got away with it, because I believe she's guilty. Um, and then a few years later, I saw that Netflix had up the Lizzie Borden Chronicles, which is a TV show. And me and my friend Courtney, uh, we watched it. And we would like we would talk about it in psychology cl class. And obviously, it's completely dramatized. It's most of it's not real. It's the show's about like after the killings, so it's kind of like they've taken the base um, story and just added onto it to make a TV show. But I still loved it. I think this is a very interesting case and I do believe that she was guilty, so let's get into it. So in Fall River, Massachusetts in 1892, the bodies of Andrew and Abby Borden were found brutally murdered in their home. After an investigation was conducted, it was believed that the murderer was in fact 32-year-old Lizzie Borden, who was Andrew Borden's youngest daughter. Taking it back a few years, Elizabeth Borden was born the youngest daughter to Andrew and Sarah Borden and she had an older sister called Emma. A few years later, the mother got sick and she died, leaving Emma to raise her little sister and Andrew, who was a businessman, remarried a woman called Abby Gray. The two sisters didn't get on at all with Abby. They believed that she just wanted her that their father's money. He was extremely wealthy. He was in the carpentry and real estate business, I believe. So he was pretty wealthy. Um, he was a Borden and the Bordens of that town were extremely wealthy. And both of the girls had a very difficult relationship with their stepmother because they believed she was only in it for the money. It was very well known throughout the town that the two sisters didn't get on with Abby. They would only call her Mrs. Borden. Um, they would have regular arguments despite Abby marrying their father when they were young. She was just not a motherly figure in their eyes and they didn't respect her because they only believed she was there for the money and didn't actually love their father. On the morning of August 4th in 1892, Andrew Borden got ready and he left for work, leaving Abby, Lizzie and also their maid Bridget at home alone. The older sister Emma wasn't in the house, she was out of town visiting friends, so obviously she wasn't a suspect in this case because she wasn't in the house when the murders occurred. A few hours later, Andrew Borden returned home and led on the couch to have a rest. The maid, Bridget, who was upstairs having a rest herself because she felt unwell, heard a scream at about 11.15 and ran downstairs to find Lizzie Borden screaming over her father's dead body, like repeatedly saying that someone had come in and murdered her father. Andrew Borden's face was completely unrecognisable. It was evident that he had been struck multiple times in the face by some kind of object, um, an axe-like object, and upon finding his body, a search was conducted through the house where Abby Borden's body was found dead in the guest bedroom. She had been kneeling, um, her, she was face down, and it was evident that she had been struck in the back of the head repeatedly with a similar object to that that Andrew had been killed by. Uh, the police came and they did a thorough search through the house to see if there were any signs of break-in, robbery, um, any sexual assault, anything of that sort, um, and they couldn't find anything, but they did go to the shed out in the garden and that's where they found two hatchets which they believed were the murder weapons, although nothing has actually been proven, uh, no evidence had come through to prove that the hatchets that they found were actually 
the murder weapons in question. That's just what the police believed. Their main suspects were Lizzie and Bridget as they had been the only ones in the house during the time of the murders. And as I said before, there was no evidence of breaking and entering or robbery or sexual assault or anything like that. Although Andrew Borden was quite wealthy, so it was believed he had many enemies, so the police kind of didn't know where to start. Um, they looked into another suspect, John Morse, who had arrived just one day before the murders took place. He was Lizzie Borden's uncle, but he provided an alibi that he was out visiting his niece and nephew during the time of the murders, so he was ruled out. And Bridget, the maid, she had explained that she had felt ill, so had gone up to the attic to rest whilst the murders took place. Lizzie was the only one that didn't have an alibi, so she was kind of bumped up to the main suspect. Another thing that led the police to believe that Lizzie had committed the murders was that a day prior to the killings she had tried to buy prusic acid from a shop which is a known poison and fun fact for you, um, women tend to commit murder through poison more than any other way so they believed that she had tried to buy poison so she could get rid of Andrew and Abby and then when that didn't work she just decided to go the old fashioned way and get rid of them with an axe. It was also alleged that a few days after the murders, Lizzie had been seen burning a dress which the prosecution says was stained with paint, but it's believed that it was actually stained with blood and that she was burning it to cover up the evidence of her crime. After an autopsy was conducted, it was discovered that Abby had been murdered first with roughly 18 blows to the back of her head and she had been murdered actually before Andrew had even gotten home. So when he did get home to have a rest, he had no idea that his wife was murdered upstairs in the guest bedroom, which I found really sad because he had no idea and he also had no idea that he was going to be murdered either. Um, and his autopsy showed that he had been murdered by either 10 or 11 blows directly to his face. And you gotta have a lot of rage to completely mess up someone's face like that. So that's why people believe it was Lizzie because she really didn't get along with her dad because he was very tight with his money. Um, he was wealthy, but he didn't live a wealthy lifestyle. And she wanted to live on a place called The Hill. Uh, a lot of other Bordens uh, lived on The Hill. It was a very wealthy area. Whereas her father had a house in town. It wasn't this amazing, you know, wealthy mansion or anything and she believed that she deserved to live on the hill with the other Bordens and live this massive life of luxury and that's one of the reasons people believe that she murdered both Andrew and Abby was to benefit from both of their deaths and get the money so that she could live the life that she deserved. The town had been divided regarding Lizzie's guilt, half of them believing that she was completely innocent, a you know highly born respectable woman, a Sunday school teacher, couldn't possibly have murdered her father and stepmother, whilst others believed that she definitely could have. She was greedy, she was money grabbing and all she wanted was to live the life that she believed that she was entitled to. During Lizzie's preliminary hearing, the courtroom was filled with all of her supporters, which were mainly women and suffragettes who believed that she was innocent. They also thought that she uh, was being unfairly tried because she was being judged by a jury of men. Uh, women weren't allowed to be part of a jury at that time in history and because Lizzie was a spinster, uh, you know, she wasn't married, uh, she was a little bit weird that these men were going to uh, wrongly convict her because of misogynistic views pretty much um, and they believed that she was being unfairly tried. The judge determined that she was probably guilty due to her constantly contradicting herself. You know, she didn't have an alibi. She would um, say one thing and then go back in it five minutes later. Um, you know, she was just very confused and would say things and then take them back or just, you know, talk about completely random things. Um, so the judge decided that she should stay in jail until a superior court trial. In November of that year, Lizzie's case was brought before a grand jury and with her father's money, she was able to afford the best legal defense team and after a very lengthy trial, she was then acquitted of the crimes and allowed back into society as a free woman. I do not agree with this at all. I do actually think she was guilty. Um, there's just um, so much evidence against her. I think that she was greedy and she did actually want her father's money, so he killed Abby and Andrew just to get that. I also believe that the court system just thought it was too difficult to uh, convict a woman during the time. Um, obviously I said before there was heaps of suffragettes and women were you know fighting for their rights which you know I'm all for but I do believe that like to kind of shut women up they were kind of like okay we'll just let her go so that's what I believe. I do actually think she was guilty. After her acquittal she returned back to town and she faced um, 
a town that was still divided, um, many believing that she was guilty um, and that she just escaped the law. She eventually went and bought a house on the hill, which is where she always wanted to live. Everyone knew that's where she wanted to live. Um, she had had arguments with her father about money because she believed that she should live on the hill, which is where all of the other wealthy Bordens lived. Um, and she went and bought a house there, which I think just confirms her guilt even more. The village children would also sing a little catchy song about her, pretty much, um, you know, just saying that she was guilty, that she murdered her um, parents. Uh, this case has actually been the inspiration for many literature works, um, movies, TV shows. As I said, I watched the Lizzie Borden Chronicles. Um, it's very popular. Um, and very interesting. I do believe that she was guilty. She died at the age of 66 um, from pneumonia, um, still not married, she didn't have any children, uh, she just had that house on the hill um, and many believe that she is still guilty to this day. I am one of those people as I've said many times in this video, I do actually think she did it. Um, the house that the murders um, happened in is still up today. Um, I think they like run little tours and stuff so you can actually go through the rooms that the murders were committed. I know a lot of uh, ghost hunters have gone to the Lizzie Borden house and tried to um, contact uh, Lizzie and, uh, uh, no sorry, Abby and Andrew to see you know if they can connect and to see if they can find out who actually killed them. Um, I've seen many different outcomes from these. Um, I watched one, I think Mikey did it from Glam and Gore. Um, and that was very entertaining, so you guys should check out um, those. If you guys do think she's guilty, uh, leave a comment down below, tell me what you think. Um, or if you don't think she's guilty, you know, I'd love to know your opinion. Um, as always, I will leave the links um, to all my sources down below so you can check out um, all the information down below. I would definitely recommend watching the Lizzie Borden Chronicles. It doesn't stay true to the actual case, um, it is dramatised, it's a TV show. Um, but it's very interesting so check that out and if you guys want me to cover any more cases or spooky occurrences or anything uh, drop a comment down below and I will do my best to research it and make a video for you so that is the Lizzie Borden case I hope you guys enjoyed it um, don't forget to subscribe like all that blah 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 and I will see you guys next time it keeps coming up that there's like two faces like the cameras recognizing two faces in the frame a little bit freaked out. Oh, okay. Two sisters didn't get on. What the f is that?